In the last video, we talked about the geometry node hair system and how it works. If you don't know the basics of this hair system, I highly recommend you check that one out. I put it on top right corner. But in this one, we're gonna make this hair using the system I mentioned. So before starting the tutorial, go ahead and download the hair system for free on my Gumroad. You can also download the more easy to access version where all the hair settings is on the modifier properties. That one is on my Gumroad as well. Let's go. First thing to do when you wanna create hair is to analyze your reference in your mind. Separate the different parts of the hair, like the top and sides. It might be different based on the hairstyle. Then separate the hair to individual clumps to understand it better. Now look for the direction of each hair clump. These are all important when it comes to understanding the flow of the hair. So don't skip it. Bring your head. Shift A and go to curve. Then click on empty hair. Hold control tab and go to scalp mode. But first, we gotta go to the render properties. And in the curves, change the shape from a strand to strip. And add a few additional subdivision to smooth out hair curves. Pick up the add brush. Set the count and length to whatever you want. I put the count on 2. You can change the length in the curve shape right here. Then I start putting the hair on top of the head. Make sure you do it based on your hairstyle. Mine is full on the top. So I press F and drag the mouse to the right to make the brush bigger. Then I spread it all over the top. Make sure you place the hair based on the reference where we separated each part. So do not spread it all over the head randomly. If you think you added too much or less than you want, don't worry. Just pick up density brush. In the curve shape, enable the interpolate options. And while the density mode is on auto, press shift R and drag to left or right until you get to your desired density. Now you can fill out the empty spots or reduce the hair amount. Make sure you don't overcrowd the head because we can take care of the hair amount in the geometry nodes. If you accidentally put some hair outside the areas you want, just pick up the lead brush and start removing the hair you don't want. Once you think it's good enough, pick up the comb tool and start grooming the hair. Make sure you click outside of the hair area and drag to the direction you want. This way you have more control over the intensity of the comb. Change the position of the camera and try grooming it from different angles. When you want to move the big portion of the hair, increase the size of the brush by pressing F and drag to the right. But for the front, you can lower the size of the brush and style it. The hair is way too long in the back. So I pick up grow shrink brush and while it's on subtract, I slowly decrease the length of the hair in the back. Lower the strength of the brush if you think it's too intense. When you are satisfied with the top, let's move on to the side. Hold control tab and go to object mode. Click on the head again, shift A and go to curve and add an empty hair. Pick up add brush and start adding the hair around the head. You can turn on symmetry. If you want the same results on both sides, the hair should be way shorter on the sides. So I undo everything and in the curve shape, decrease the length of the hair. Now we can begin putting the hair all over the head. You can pick up density brush again and change the density to your liking. Then start fixing the space between the hair strands. There are some junk hair on the ears. We don't want that. So with the delete brush, we can remove those hair strands. You see we got some space between the ears and the hair. We can fix that using a slide brush. Click and drag the hair until you got your desired hairline. I realized it needed more density. So with the density brush, I made the hair fuller. We can groom the hair to the direction we want. First I drag it down, then shape the back of the head so the hair rests on the head. I keep doing it from different angles. I want the hair a bit shorter in the bottom. So using grow shrink tool, while it's on subtract, I decrease the length of the hair strands in the bottom. I'm using a big size brush because I want the big portion of the hair to be shortened. Using comb tool, I start reforming the overall shape of the hair before proceeding. You see the side part of the head is overlapping with the top. We can easily fix it using a slide tool. Just drag out the hair out of the top. I want the side part fade out when it comes to the bottom, so we need to make the hair a bit longer on the upper part. I pick up a snake hook brush and drag the hair to the left to make him longer. You need to do it based on the direction of the hair. I realized when I was dragging the hair down, I made this huge gap on the other side of the hair. To fix that, we can use the density brush. So I select the hair on top and fill out the gap with the same density as the hair. You gotta make sure all the interpolate options from the curve shape is enabled, so it follows the shape and length of the other hair strands. If you're happy with the 
results, we can begin the geometry nodes process. Go to file and click on append. Open the file you just downloaded from Gumroad and in the node tree, import the main hair. Select the hair and in the modifier properties, click on this icon and choose main hair. Drag out a new window and put it on geometry nodes. Now you see all the nodes right here. First go to the stick to the mesh section and choose your model as the object. So the roots of the hair stick to the mesh. Back to hair amount, increase the amount to your liking. Then in the bottom, spread it just a bit. You can also increase or decrease the point counts to make it lighter or heavier. In the clumping, change the max. So the tip of the hair strands clump together. We can change the random length to give the hair length more variety. To the hair thickness, I decrease the min to get a thinner hair. But this opens a lot of space between the hair strands. So back to hair amount, I increase the amount of hair. In the noise section, increase the value and exponent. You see nothing's happening. That's because the scale is on zero. When we increase the scale, hair gets noisy based on the scale and power of the noise you put in. Now you can get back and change the value and exponent until it looks right to you. In the curl section, increase the shape and the scale just a bit. Since the hair is not curly, we don't want too much curl. I go back and decrease the noise and add a bit more curl instead of noise. Back to clumping, I decrease the max so we got more clumping in the tips. Now let's go to the roughness section in the right. Increase the value and exponent like before. Then increase the scale to see the results. It is still too much so I take my time to balance it out. Back at the hair amount again, I increase the hair amount, then decrease the thickness even more. You see the hairline is messed up. It's not looking great. We gotta rearrange these hair strands in a line so we could have a nice hairline in the front. Using a slide tool, I move these hair strands to the front and place them beside each other so they're more uniform. Definitely take your time on this one. We got some hair strands that go on all over the place. To groom just these hair strands, we need to use selection paint. Set the select mode on curve and click on the root of the strand to select it easier. Once you selected it, choose a comb brush and groom these hair strands to whatever direction you want. I try to hide it under the hair. I start fixing the hairline even more using a slide tool. Then adding more hair strands using density brush to fill out those empty spaces between the hair strands. Before moving on to the sides, I take my time and work on the overall shape of the hair using comb tool. For more realism, we need to have another layer of hair so it wouldn't look too perfect. Hold Ctrl Tab and go to Object Mode. Select the hair and Shift E to duplicate. Press Escape to place it back. Now in the Geometry Nodes, click on this icon to duplicate the Geometry Nodes. You can also change the name if you want. We have a Delete Hair section. The more you increase the number, more hair strands will disappear. I put it on 0.7 because I just want few. Now we can change the noise, roughness and other stuff for it to stick out of the main hair. Then we can use the comb tool to move it around. There's a way to see the hair better. Hold Z and go to render view. Then in the render settings, change it from EV to workbench. Then change the lighting to matcap and put it on this one. Put the color on object. Enable cavity and increase the ridge and valley. Now we can see the individual hair much better. I go back to object mode, select the hair on the sides and go to sculpt mode again. Using grow and shrink tool, while it's on add, I start increasing the length of the hair in this area. Then using comb tool, start grooming it until it sits on the head. 
Now I want to add another layer of hair. So control tab and go to object mode, select the head, shift A and then the curve, select the empty hair again. Now control tab and back to the sculpting mode. First using add tool, I only add two hair strands. Then switching back to comb, I groom it to the back. In the modifier properties, click on this icon and put it on main hair just like before. In the geometry notes, click on this icon. So we duplicate the notes with a new name. I decrease the hair amount, decrease the curl, slight changes in the clumping and some to the noise. Then I went ahead and add more hair strands and groomed it one by one. We're doing this to make a nice transition between the top and sides. Now finally, let's add the geometry nodes to the sides. Select the side hair. In the modify properties, click on this icon and put it on main hair. Don't forget to click on this icon to duplicate it and you can name it whatever you want. I forgot to do it for the other two. So I went ahead and named those as well. Now back to the side hair. In the geometry nodes, I removed the stick to the mesh node because it doesn't do well with short hair strands. Then I connected the trim curve straight to the next node, which is capture attribute. Then alt tab and in the sculpt mode, I start grooming the hair so it sits nicely on the head. You can switch to render view for a better look. Now we need to increase the hair amount. I'm still not satisfied with the hairline, so using a slide tool with a big brush, I move the hairline forward. We can also use pinch tool to bring some of the hair strands closer together so the hair doesn't look too perfect. I go over the hair again and give it a final groom so it would be ready for the final stages. I added few more hair strands in this area to blend the top with the sides even more. Side hair needs to be a bit more crowded since we can still see the scalp. So using density brush and by pressing shift R, I choose my desired density and I start adding the remaining hair. Just like the top, I'm gonna make a second layer for the sides to make it more realistic. So select the sides, shift D to duplicate, escape to place it back, click on the duplicate icon and name it. Find the delete hair node and remove most of the hair. So we're left with a small amount. Find clumping and mess around with the numbers. In the curl section, I increase the shape and scale to make it more messy. We want the second layer to stick out of the main hair. That's why we increase these options, but you do it based on your reference. The hair is almost done. I ended up with these settings in the geometry nodes, but I recommend you tweak the settings based on your hairstyle, because it's not gonna look the same for everyone. We can now give it a material. Selecting the hair from the material settings, give it a new material. The color doesn't matter for now. Just assign the material to all the hair parts. In the shading, shift A and add a mix color, which was called mix RGB in old blender versions. Then connect it to the base color. Shift A again and add curves info. If you're using an older blender version, it's called hair info. Now we have few options. If you connect the intercept to the factor and change the colors, you get a gradient on the hair from color A to color B. Now you can shift A and add a color ramp. Drop it in between and control the gradient using these handles, but I don't want to use it in this case. Instead, I'm going to connect the random to the factor. Now what it does is to spread 
the A and B colors throughout the hair randomly. It's really good for Eevee when you want to add a fake contrast between the hair strands. Just use a brighter color for A or B and a darker color for the other one. Now I want to make him older by adding white hair. So Ctrl Shift D to duplicate the color ramp. Connect the color ramp to color A or B. Now click on the right handle and in the bottom you can change the color. Then click on the left handle and change the color to a bright color. Now by moving these handles we can determine how much white or gray color we want on the hair. Just mess around with the colors until it looks right. At the end I was happy with the black hair and this is the results. I used the sample HDRI map for the scene. Where did the beard come from? Well next video is gonna be all about making the beard. Subscribe if you wanna see that. And if you liked the video give it a thumbs up. To download the 3D files and real time process of making these characters be sure to check out my Gumroad and Patreon page. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.